Welcome back to the Hammer on Box News Corner. Our brand new limited edition Harbour Boxed and Hammer on Boxed merch is still available right now. There's about 12 days left on the campaign and then that's it. So if you're interested, get in now. I think the designs look pretty great. We've got t-shirts and hoodies available for both options and it's a fantastic way to support our independent hardware testing. Links to all of that are in the description. It's been a reasonably slow couple of weeks for news, so right now at least we're just pushing out News Corner whenever there is an interesting piece of news to discuss. And given AMD today has announced some new CPUs, I figured it was a good time to get back in the News Corner chair, which actually is coincidentally the exact same chair as I use for all the other videos. So maybe not the News Corner chair, just a regular old chair. But anyway, let's get into the news. So. The big story to talk about today are AMD's new Ryzen 3 processors. They're launching two SKUs, the Ryzen 3 3300X and the Ryzen 3 3100, both of which use AMD's latest Zen 2 architecture and are, of course, 7 nanometer chips. This is the first time since 2017 that AMD have launched widely available Ryzen 3 CPUs using their latest architecture. Of course, back in 2017, we had two first-gen Ryzen 3 options packing four cores and four threads, but since then, AMD have largely used the Ryzen 3 line for APUs like the 2200G and 3200G, and the occasional OEM-only chip such as the Ryzen 3 2300X. Nothing wrong with those parts. They've often been, you know, decent budget choices, even if you don't need the integrated GPU. But they've always felt a little behind the higher tier options purely because they've launched into the lineup with the previous gen architecture like the 12 nanometer Zen Plus Ryzen 3 3200G, which launched alongside Zen 2. That all changes today because AMD are now essentially completing their Zen 2 series with proper current gen Ryzen 3 CPUs. Both are quad core designs with SMT enabled, so four cores, eight threads, none of this four thread business that we've had with previous Ryzen 3 chips. The Ryzen 3 3100 has a base clock of 3.6 GHz and a maximum boost of 3.9 GHz, while the 3300X increases both clock speeds to 3.8 GHz base and 4.3 GHz boost. Not the highest clocking parts you'll ever see, particularly the 3100, which has the lowest boost of any Ryzen 3000 CPU, but the 3300X is in the realm of the Ryzen 5 3600's clocks, although of course with fewer cores. The other major change here is the level 3 cache system, which is reduced from 32 meg with 6 core and 8 cores and 2 parts, down to 16 megabytes. Everything else remains the same as we have from current Zen 2 chips, so AM4 platform support, 65 watt TDP, 24 PCIe 4.0 lanes, and so on. The killer feature here is the price tag. The Ryzen 3 3100 will be available for just 99 US dollars, while the Ryzen 3 3300X is coming in at $120, with a launch date of May 21st. It's pretty crazy to think that just a little over three years ago, if you wanted a four core, eight thread unlocked CPU, you'd need to shell out $350 for Intel's Core i7 7700K, while now, that's basically a $100 option with Zen 2. Even today, all of Intel's competing Core i3s pack just four threads, and if you want an unlocked part, that'll cost you around $170 or so for the Core i3-9350KF. Intel's 10th gen lineup is set to provide hyper-threading in the quad-core Core i3 line, but they'll have their work cut out to make it an attractive offering up against these Ryzen 3s, especially if there is no movement on price like is what's being predicted. There are probably a few questions that you have about these processes. For example, is this using AMD's chiplet plus IO die design, or is it a new die? Well, AMD hasn't provided us that information, but there's basically no chance this is a new design. It'll just be heavily binned chiplets that didn't make the cut for higher tier Ryzen processors. The other question we've been asked is relating to the CCX layout for this quad core design. Is it a single CCX with four cores enabled, or is it two CCXs with two cores in each? As we know, AMD's Zen 2 chiplets have eight cores split into two CCXs, and how the cores are divided can have performance implications, with a preference for having all cores in the one CCX for latency reasons. 
Unfortunately, this info is under NDA, so we aren't able to provide any answer, uh, but I figured I'd at least address it here just to save a few questions in the comments and why we can't actually tell you about the CCX right now. The launch of these new Ryzen 3 parts will also create an interesting battle between it and previous generation 12 nanometer parts, like the popular Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which is usually available for around $100. PC builders will be facing a choice between 4 Zen 2 cores or 6 Zen Plus cores at roughly the same price, so it'll be interesting to see where performance lies in the end. More on that next month. AMD also officially announced today that B550 motherboards will be available starting June 16 from all the usual motherboard partners. The only feature AMD announced was support for PCIe 4.0, but again, we can't tell you what sort of PCIe 4.0 configuration you'll be getting with these boards just yet, or really anything else about it. We're just hearing B550 PCI 4.0 support on June 16. Still, that's good news for budget buyers that have been holding out for new mainstream motherboard choices for two years now since the launch of B450 back at Computex in 2018. And with PCI 4.0 a confirmed inclusion, it doesn't make it just a basic rebrand and refresh of B450. We are getting something new here with the new B550 lineup, so more to come on that. In other processor news this week, AMD has quietly pushed out the Ryzen 3 1200 AF, another 12 nanometer refresh of an older 14 nanometer part, similar to the popular Ryzen 5 1600 AF. This new 1200 AF is a bit less exciting though, because the Ryzen 3 1200 wasn't a particularly amazing CPU to begin with, certainly not at the level of the 1600 with its 6 cores and 12 threads. So what is the Ryzen 3 1200 AF providing? Like the 1600 versus 1600 AF, the basic specifications of the 1200 AF are the same as the 1200. This means 4 cores and 4 threads with a base clock of 3.1 GHz and a boost clock of 3.4 GHz. Cache remains the same at 8 MB of level 3, as does the TDP at 65 watts and we're also still getting an included Wraith Stealth box cooler. The main difference here is in the architecture. Getting a bump from Zen to Zen Plus does bring improved latency, which helps out a bit while gaming, and a potential for increased overclocking headroom, as 12 nanometer has a bit more room for higher clocks. The 1200 AF also has a different product code, which you'll need to look for when buying. Make sure you check it says AF, not AE in that code. As for pricing, Computerbase have found the Ryzen 3 1200 AF is now on sale at various German retailers with a price tag of around 55 to 60 euros, including their 19% VAT. In USD, this means it has a price tag around $50 before tax, which is pretty cheap. That's around the same price of the Athlon 3000G, which is just a two core, four thread Zen processor. So for those after a dirt cheap CPU, the 1200 AF could be a better way to go, but as always, we'll have to see how it stacks up in some benchmarks if we do manage to get our hands on one. You know a product launch is right around the corner when suddenly there are a ton of leaks coming out of OEMs. In this case, we're starting to see many leaks surrounding Z490 motherboards, the next batch of boards that will be required to run Intel's 10th gen processors as Intel are moving to a new socket with this generation. In the past week or so, video cards have received information, pictures and slides featuring a lot of boards from ASUS and MSI. On the ASUS side, this includes the Prime series, the Tough series, ROG Strict series, and the ROG Maxima series. Seems like ASUS will be putting out a lot of boards with minor changes to different specs and features. The Strix series, for example, judging by their slide, has a huge seven offerings, plus there's three Prime boards and four in the Maximus 12 series. Their flagship boards will include up to 16 power stages, with 12 stages the most for the Strix series, and then between 12 and 8 for their Prime boards. You'll also see 2.5 gigabit Ethernet here for a lot of the products, with up to 10 gigabit available on the Maximus boards. On the MSI front, we don't have quite as much information on their offerings, but yeah, it does look like we'll be getting all the standard boards like the Godlike, Ace, Unify, Gaming, and Tomahawk models. Pricing leaked by Momomo seems quite high, with the entry-level boards starting at around €200, Euros, which would be around the mark, if not a bit more expensive than X570 boards. So it definitely seems like this new Z490 series is going to be yeah, quite an expensive investment if you want to pair it with an unlocked 10th-gen processor. 
Final topic for this week, not a particularly long episode or anything like that. Uh, we have the new LG 34GN850, which is their successor to the 34GK950F, which was a pretty damn good 3440 by 1440 IPS ultrawide. The new 34GN850 pumps up the refresh rate to 160 hertz from 144 hertz and still offers the same one millisecond response times, which are more like five milliseconds in practice. Other features include FreeSync and G-Sync support, 98% DCI-P3 coverage, a standard 1000 to 1 contrast ratio, and garbage to HDR in Display HDR 400, which basically means there is no actual HDR support here. Pricing is expected to come in around $1,000, which is where the 34GK950F used to sit. It's an expensive monitor, but it's a premium ultrawide at the same time. That's it for this week's episode of News Corner. Just wanted to get out that information on those new Ryzen 3 processors. We'll hopefully have some reviews for you in the coming weeks. You can expect to see all the performance data and how it's going to compare to some of those processors like the 1600 AF. So that will be a very interesting battle. I think, as always, you can subscribe for more news coverage here at Hardware Unbox. Don't forget about the merch that is on sale for another two weeks or so if you want to get the Hammer On Box design or the Harbor Box design. As I said, I think they look great and yeah, appreciate all your support. Patreon as well, links to that in the description below. And I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>